Hi, welcome to Life in a Bottle, season two, episode 18 B? B. B? B? I don't know. Um, P. P? P.J. Cotton Valley Vineyards. Um, <laughs> all right, so why are we here? We're here because I'm a knucklehead, right? Let's, we can all agree. I'm the knucklehead that thought we had enough of the Patton Valley Vineyards estate, Pinot Noir, the baby estate, right? Mike, would you call it the baby estate? What do you call uh, it? I've never called it that, but I'm really comfortable with that. I feel, okay. I feel good about it. Okay. So I'm the knucklehead that thought we had enough <laughs> of the baby estate, um, but we didn't because we sold out. But it's a good thing because we're going to enter the two wines, too. So um, the, the one wine, Mike, that you can talk about um, is uh, the big brother of the baby, right? Uh, which is the 15. Nice, nice. I like that. And then we're going to get a little geeky, right? Because then we're going to talk about this, which uh, I'm a huge... Uh, I, I love that wine, I, as you know, because... You. Yeah. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the big boy, Pino? Sure. The, the 2015 Estate Pinot Noir, which we did this to a minute ago, um, is a great uh, complement, the sort of more elegant version of the white label or the baby Pinot. Um, what we've lovingly and um, over the last 25 years called the estate used to be the single wine we produced. Um, as the vineyard began to grow and as, um, you know, market adaptability becomes an issue, we want to make more than one wine. Uh, you want to figure out what to do with all your fruit. You want to preserve the integrity of your, your signature wine, your flagship wine, which is what we think about when we think about this. So this has always been uh, priority one in a lot of ways. It's the wine that we think about when we think about us, to, uh, to borrow a Raymond Carver phrase. Um, it is really about balance. It's about uh, checking all the boxes for Oregon Pinot, which I think it does sort of instantaneously. You smell it, you pick up that sort of red fruit, something spicy, something earthy, something I do not know what, um, that says Oregon Pinot. But to me, this has always been about the, the structural elements that make it so pleasurable. Uh, people talk about balance when they talk about wine all the time. And I think this may be um, the best illustration of it. You smell it, again, you taste it, and you're like, yeah, it's Oregon Pinot. But then the second sip here really reveals itself to you in a, in a, in a PG way. Um, thinking about acidity that makes you salivate, thinking about tannin that pulls that that um, saliva out of your mouth and then fruit slowly uh, sort of lets itself show and then you kind of almost forget that it's alcohol because it's not screaming at you and that push pull tug shove and then finally hug um, takes a couple minutes takes two three minutes and that's the beauty of this wine it's the balance of acid tannin alcohol and fruit and somewhere in the middle that venn diagram is a very big uh, concentric circle of, of sort of kick butt. So a little bit more time in, in oak than the white label, right? This is uh, for closer to 14 or 16 months in barrel with more new oak, uh, 20 to 20, well, this was 20 percent new oak, uh, which is gonna give it some more depth and complexity. Furthermore, this is gonna be the fruit uh, that ripens up a little later and frustratingly has smaller clusters, uh, lower yields in those blocks. The really sort of uh, pain in the butt stuff they talk about when they talk about farming in Oregon, uh, two tons to the acre rather than six or seven, which is um, what we can get in, in warmer places. So this is a fragile flower in every sense of the word, but man, it is a dynamic wine. And for us, again, it's the thing we think about when we think about Patton Valley. The PTG, this, this orange labeled fella right here, uh, is based on uh, something I know that you three are familiar with, which is Bourgogne Pastu Grand. Um, Pasta Gran is a part an AOC in, in Burgundy that uh, covers all of Burgundy, which is sort of unusual. And it's a style of wine. Uh, Pasta Gran is, is not a really interesting word. It means past the grains, but it's a French idiom that's come to mean throw it all in. 
And the, the historic practice in, in Burgundy was to let vineyard and harvest workers make their own wine from the second crop. Not the first crop that we turn into the big, fancy, delicious stuff, but the stuff that takes a little while to ripen up that nobody ever uses because it's not very good. So they'd make a kind of easy wine out of whatever grapes they could find. They would literally throw it all in and make something fun, quaffable, etc. In the last 150 years or so, we have producers that I know you're familiar with, like uh, Chevion, who have elevated this category, started to make very fancy versions of this wine. And um, it, it's there is a historical precedent of, of this type of thing in Oregon, but we really wanted to do something that was true to type for, for Burgundy, but also reflective of what we do in Oregon. So we're lucky enough that the rules in uh, Postugon AOC in Burgundy say that the wines can be made of Pinot Noir, Gamay, Chardonnay, and Pinot Gris, and then they have rules about what the quantities are. And those are all things that are readily available uh, in the Willamette Valley. So um, sort of the foibles of my own, our own knuckleheaded uh, stuff, when, you, when we first planted Patton Valley um, back in 1997, you know, you order a half a million vines, right? You're like, I'll have 500,000 Pinot Noirs, but they come to you as sticks. It's just a stick. So it's a couple years later until you realize what you get. And as it turns out, of those half a million vines or so, maybe 38 of them were actually Chardonnay. So they're scattered throughout the vineyard. But when we decided to do this grafting, we decided to cut out that Chardonnay and put it into one single row adjacent to the Gamay. Um, Pinot Noir is also a highly mutable grape. Um, so it turns into all sorts of stuff. Uh, Pinot Gris has the same DNA as Pinot Noir, and it happens to mutate from Pinot Noir uh, on, on the vine during the course of the growing season. So when the Gamay is ready, we pick the Gamay, we pick the Chardonnay, we pick some Pinot Noir for this wine, and we also wander around and grab the mutated clusters here and there of Pinot Gris and throw them in. So what we're trying to do is make something that's again a reflection of that style in Burgundy. So this is an unusual wine in a million different ways. Um, it's an unusual blend, right? We're not blending for power, we're blending for lightness and softness and approachability. So this is again 50% uh, Gamay, 40% Pinot Noir, 9% Chardonnay, and 1% Pinot Gris. We picked them all on the same day. We ferment them together uh, under carbonic maceration, so an enzymatic fermentation rather than an aerobic one. Over time, enzymes within the grapes start to consume the sugars and um, you get a different type of fermentation. As soon as the carbonic finishes, which is about two thirds of the way through, we destem and press the wine out and let it finish in uh, a punch in, a two sizes of a regular barrel uh, that's neutral four months in there and you wind up with this really fresh, weird, lively, fun thing. Um, I like to serve this cold. I think it's really one of these wines that, you know, is super good as a sort of a fancy mid-course uh, pairing for something uh, anywhere. Like, you know, ridiculous fancy food. I've had it with uh, recently a sweet potato gnocchi with black truffle. Uh, which was amazing, but I think it's equally good, you know, at a picnic, um, out of a yay cup with, you know, a uh, a BLT. I think it's equally you. good with, you know, a slice of pizza um, at home on a random Tuesday, lonely with your cat. Uh, I think it's easily good, just discreetly, you know. Or if you're a real idiot and you have time to kill. <laughs> but what I like about it is it's a very serious wine. It seems like we're just fiddling around here, but it's a really serious wine yeah. that came from a place of curiosity, a real reverence for this type of thing, something that's just super pleasant and quaffable. And the thing that surprised me the most about it is how good it goes with a million different things. We sell a fair amount of wine in, in Louisiana and Mississippi, and boy, is it a hit there in the summer. You think about a, a big old gross, humid, hot afternoon and you're grilling meats, and you're like, boy, I could really, really go for a boiling hot red wine right now. Like, no chance. But this, served cold, right out of the cooler, it really does uh, slake it away, which is wonderful. 
I wish we could make more. That's that's like our the biggest bummer about this one. And I'm pretty happy I was a knuckle because uh, uh, we got to drink uh, the PTG and you got to show off your glass collection, which is important. And, I think it's important uh, to have yeah. variety of stemware or in this case, non-stemware. Thanks again for, for hanging out with us and, and explaining the wine and, and, uh, and the fact that there's not much left in my glass. I obviously adore it. So yeah. um, thank you. And you can go do your thing now. All right, dude, be safe. And uh, we'll talk again soon. And uh, we'll meet again when we have the Shannon in our glass. How's that? Yeah, absolutely. Can't wait for it. Right on. Well, Rosé's coming up. Hey, man. Cheers. Yeah, Rosé's coming too. All right, fantastic. Awesome. Was that a My hey, Little yeah. Pony? Yeah, it sure is. What? what? <laughs> nice, dude. Nice. Respect the pony. Gotta love it. Always. All right, brother. Be well. Right. You later, guys. Cheers. Well, that was fun again. It's always good to see Mike. Cody, what would you, <laughs> what would you pair this with? You know, in my in my past life, I would have said thousand percent. This is a cheese wine, um, and it is. This is a great cheese wine. Um, these days, um, I'm thinking just like sautéed uh, vegetables, and uh, if we want to go seasonal, even like uh, sautéed ramps. It uh, tis the season. I'm thinking pork, uh, pork tenderloin, some lean pork chops, mushrooms maybe. But honestly, this is the wine, like he was talking about carbonic maceration. And we see that a lot, or the, the only other place we commonly see that is Beaujolais. And Beaujolais to me is great sausage wine. It's a great hot dog wine, like all that unassuming stuff that can still be really delicious. I think this stuff goes right down that same path and you can pair it with a lot of things and have it be completely killer. The social distancing and pasta grunt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Uh, I'll see you guys before you know it. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Cheers.